Today I want to discuss how to use Material Studio 2024 to run reactive Monte Carlo molecular dynamic simulations. These are reaction simulations within classical molecular dynamics that allow you to cover extremely long time scales uh, quantitatively and allow you to see structures develop over time in ways that are highly competitive and that reactive force fields or things like ReXFF do not. So to do this, what we usually do is take a reaction mechanism, such as this one. This uh, mechanism covers the creation of solid electrode interfaces that have a uh, reaction defined here with a reactant and product in it, have a reaction energy and have a reaction barrier. So we will start by using pipeline pilot protocols to analyze this reaction mechanism, make sure it works okay. So the pipeline pilot protocol in question is the manage reaction mechanism protocol. Um, and we will just validate the mechanism. Run this and it'll come back in about a minute or so. Once the simulation is finished, we will use remote view to uh, have a look at the HTML report that's generated there to look at how the reaction mechanism works. So here we have a reactant. This is an ethylene carbonate in contact with a lithium ion. Uh, the product is a reduced ethylene carbonate uh, where one bond order has been changed. And here we've got the reactant reacted. That is the atoms of the, uh, all the atoms in the reactant configuration, but with the bonds of the uh, final product. This is quite useful in situations, for example, such as this one, where the initial reaction is a uh, is two open ethylene carbonates, which combine into a much larger complex, and the reactant reacted shows that this actually is what happens. Um, what you can also see is uh, the barrier and the reaction energy. Uh, charge transfer properties, so do these reactions um, pick up electrons or not? In this case, this particular reaction picks up an electron, uh, a symmetry assessment for this particular case, and whether it's successful. The important thing is that all the reactions that we're looking at here are indeed successful. So the same information is also uh, contained in the um, downloaded results. Um, but there it is a little bit more difficult to see, uh, but ultimately what we can see is that all reactions are successful. Having done this, let's import a structure and um, do a simulations of a solid electrolyte interface. So we import the cell that it comes with Material Studio. It contains an anode, uh, a graphitic anode, and uh, an electrolyte. And what we will simulate is what happens when electrons, electrons come from the anode, go astray, uh, and cause damage to the electrolyte. That's what the solid electrolyte interface is. So to illustrate how this works, we'll have a quick look at the sets. So here we've got the anode defined here, uh, which we will use in just a second to find where uh, electrons can jump onto the electrolyte, which is defined within a certain zone from the anode. So let's start the simulation. Uh, we go to our pipeline pilot protocols. Um, we go pre select run Monte Carlo reactive molecular dynamics. The active document is a cell. The reaction mechanism is the one that we just very carefully validated. Um, reactive cycles we need to talk about. So these are um, the number of cycles, number of reactions that we allow. So we'll pick 200. We'll choose every 20th for a structure output. And importantly, during these reactive cycles, the molecular dynamic simulation time will be determined from the total reaction rate, bounded by a minimum and a maximum. Here we choose relatively small minimum, that's okay. Uh, this maximum reactive cycle time you probably want to increase for production simulations, but for running it on a laptop for a demo, this will do fine. In addition, as I mentioned before, electrons can be transferred from the anode 
defined set to the uh, reactive system, which means we need to define a charge transfer zone declared by the anode, and we will transfer charges within 10 angstrom. Um, in addition, whenever there is a charge transfer, we will, uh, we will balance the charges by inserting a counter ion of lithium somewhere else in the unit cell. We'll keep all the other settings as is, except for GPU, which we will use because it really accelerates foresight. And then we just run the simulation. This simulation will take some time. Um, I here have the results in here. And let's have a look at the different results. So the first thing we want to look at are the species and candidates. So these give you an overview of the reactants that occur during the simulation. Uh, for example, the ethylene carbonates, which are most of the electrolyte, reduce over the simulation every time one is reduced or an electron transfer is an lithium ion is input into the simulation cell. This gives you an overview of the candidate counts for different types of reactions uh, as a function of reactive cycle. And this gives you the probability of each reaction occurring. This whole data is also contained in the candidate counts where you can plot it separately um, to focus on specific reactions. And it is included in the species counts. Um, here you also see uh, an assessment of the absolute time, which is from the rate uh, equation, and that actually gives you um, the real time that would occur between different reactions, which you see here runs into 10 to the 5 picoseconds, so almost half a microsecond, in just a few hours run on a laptop. Okay, but the most interesting results are here. Um, these are all the different cells that were generated during the calculation. So this is what we started with. And then as we click through, we can see here small changes of the atoms during the overall cycle. Um, I admit that doesn't look very exciting, but let me go to the last system and then we can analyze this in a bit more detail and show you what actually has developed that's not so obvious from here. So this is cycle 200 and this cycle we will use to analyze and more detail and build a density profile or concentration profile. So again, we go to pipeline pilot and we select analyze Monte Carlo reactive molecular dynamics. We analyze the active document and we choose the initialized reaction mechanism that was used to run the calculation to start with. We analyze all species, we create a concentration profile, um, and uh, use default display settings. Run this. Okay, here are the results. Uh, these are all the documents that come back. And we will start by looking at the initialized reactions, which define names for all the reactants and, and species. So these species are used as a legend, uh, specifically for the concentration profile, which is here. For each species, you get a uh, concentration as a function of Z distance. There's nothing here because that's where the anode is located and all the interesting reactions occur here. You can already see a layer forming of open ethylene covenant. Um, the colors here are color coordinated in the labeled reactive cycle. So shown here. where you can see, looking at it from the top, most of the stuff is uh, this blue stuff, which is uh, closed ethylene carbonate, what we started with. All the other molecules are a little bit hidden. So what we can do is make them more visible by exploiting the sets. For example, this set here is all the open ethylene carbonate. We can make this uh, revert to its original display style color by element and line. And that gives you a much more open view of the system. So now you can see how a layer starts forming here um, that contains 
the assault electrolyte interface and then a bigger simulation will develop into the solid electrolyte interface. That's actually quantitative, gives you gas formation, uh, gives you a different species, gives you a formation of uh, lithium salts and so on. Uh, for more information, have a look at our product sheets or have a look at our publication about this particular uh, effect, which is cited below.